Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 224. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is I'm starting the conversation about the best action figures of the year. So this is like my favorite episode to do every year, and even before I was on YouTube, I used to write a toy blog called Mike's Collection, and I would always do a best of the year list. Uh, even in my personal life, I always used to make best of the year lists, whether anybody cared or not. I always make my best of movies, best of music every year. Um, and I share those with just my friends on Facebook and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how excited you guys get to see my top 10 toys of the year or whatever, but I always get very excited to make this list. In fact, I'm usually thinking about it all year long. If you watch my videos regularly, You'll probably hear me say fairly often when I get a new figure, I'm like, this guy's a contender for best of the year. Like, I'm always thinking about it, and I'm like, ooh, I think this guy might get pushed off my list now because I get this figure and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I just love putting these together. And uh, as I sit down to film this, it is December 2nd. So you might be thinking, well, it's maybe a little bit early to be doing your best of the year list. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're thinking, well... You know, it's already December. How many more toys can you possibly get in the last month? Well, you'd be surprised. Um, I'm expecting probably another 30 or so figures to arrive before the end of the month. In fact, I got a brand new G.I. Joe figure, uh, Dusty, just like a half an hour ago. I did not plan to get him before the end of the year. I didn't think I was going to get him, but I got him. So even with the planned 30, it could be more than that. So uh, yeah, there's lots of new figures coming in and there's a lot of good ones coming in too. There's still figures that I don't have in my hand yet that could still make the, uh, the best of the year list. So uh, yeah, so with all those figures in mind, I thought, well, I don't want to wait till the last week of the year to start whittling this down because you know my brother's home from the united states he's visiting i've got a lot of family stuff to do around the holidays i don't want to be hiding down here in my little toy room making videos during you know the christmas break so i'm trying to get a jump start on it and so this is i'll tell you how i went about doing it so i have a uh, a mike's collection page on instagram and uh more of you should follow me on there because i've had this instagram for a few years and I cannot crack the 500 followers. Pretty much this entire year, I've been hovering around 480, 490. It goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. And it used to at least be a kind of a steady but slow incline. And I don't know if it's because they changed the algorithm or whatever, but no matter how many hashtags I use, my, uh, my followers just don't seem to budge. So please, maybe, you know, go follow me on Instagram if you don't already. But... Even though I don't have a huge following on Instagram, and even though, you know, on average, most of my posts get like 20 likes or less or so, um, I have to post every toy that I buy on Instagram. It's just a bit of a compulsion for me. Same as every toy I buy, I show you guys on this YouTube channel. You know, I don't ever buy a figure and think, oh, this one kind of sucks. I'm just going to go throw it on the shelf. I'm not going to bother talking about it. I talk about every toy I buy. So I talk about it on the channel. And I put it on Instagram. And one of the reasons why I have to put it on Instagram is Instagram serves as a very handy visual checklist for me of what toys I bought and when. So when I started kind of putting this list together of what toys did I buy this year, I went to my Instagram and I scrolled back to the start of the year and I started writing down what did I post. And, uh, you know, probably the first month of my Instagram of 2022, I was still posting figures from 2021 that I hadn't got around to posting yet. So a lot of those first figures in January, they didn't really count on this list. But by the time about February rolled around, I was starting to buy new 2022 figures. So everything that I bought from pretty much February on until now uh, is on this list. Now, saying that, there are a couple of figures that I did get like during 2022 that were 2021 releases. Um, so they're going to be in mentioned in this video, but they're not going to qualify for my best of the year list. This seems pretty self-explanatory, but in order to qualify for my best of the year list, 
the figures have to have been released in 2022 and I have to have purchased them. Um, so, you know, I can't be ranking figures that I don't own. I say this every year when I do these lists because obviously there's some amazing toys that I don't own. Some of these like Japanese import figures that are super detailed and they're also super expensive. I don't collect those. So sure, I'm sure there's some crazy $400 Japanese transformer that's better than the $20 Master of the Universe figure that I'm going to talk about here. But, you know, this is confined to the lines that I collect. So G.I. Joe, Transformers, Masters of the Universe, Marvel Legends, Ninja Turtles, uh, Star Wars Black Series. You know, there's a bit of a variety here, but at the same time, you know, it's, there's some constraints on my collecting. So it has to have been released this year. I have to have acquired it. Um, so when I was thinking of how can I kind of prepare for this video, because um, I can't, I hope, I hope my wife doesn't watch this video. I'm always nervous. She won't. She never does. But it scares me when I think of how many figures I bought every year. For the last two or three years, I think, um, since I started YouTube, I have got more than 300 action figures each year. Um, and I told myself at the start of this year, I think I'm going to try and cut back. This year, I'm on track to get about 360 action figures. So that's essentially an action figure every single day of the year, which is crazy. Um, I hope I cut back next year. But yeah, this year was a bit, uh, things got a little out of hand this year. There was a lot of cool stuff that came out. So I have about 360 action figures to choose from for this list. And that's a lot. And uh, what I've explained before, again, this is self-explanatory, but like when I go see a movie, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. So then when I do my best of the year movie list at the end of the year, the ones I didn't like are automatically eliminated. I'm like, oh, I, I don't have to worry about these ones. Same as music. You don't know if you're going to like an album when you get it or not. But with toys, I really only buy the toys that I like. Sure, sometimes I buy a toy and I'm a little disappointed by it. But for the most part, if I see a toy and it doesn't look cool or I don't like the character or whatever, I don't buy the toy. So I have to choose out of 360 toys that I like. I like all of them. And I have to try and rank my best of the year. Um, past years, I've always done, ever since I started doing this in 2012, I did my top 12 of 2012, my top 13 of 2013. Last year, I did my top 21 of 2021. I, I don't think I'm going to keep doing that forever. I think this year I'm going to say my top 20 of 2022. So I have to take 360 figures, narrow it down to 20, and then rank them. So what I thought about doing is, so I went through my Instagram, and every figure I bought, in the order that I bought it, I put in an Excel spreadsheet. I put the name of the figure, and I put the category of the figure. So Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series, whatever. And I kind of thought what I would do is maybe I would do individual videos for each brand. So I would take all my Star Wars Black Series videos and say, these are all the Star Wars figures I got in 2022. How many of these guys are good enough to be moved forward into the qualifying rounds? So maybe if I got 20 Star Wars figures, I could eliminate 15 of them and the five, better, the five best of the best could move on. And they might not make my year-end list, but at least they would qualify. The problem with that was is I didn't want to do my Star Wars video until I knew I wasn't going to get any more Star Wars figures this year. And pretty much every category of action figure I collect, whether it be Transformers, G.I. Joe, Reaction Figures, Masters of the Universe, I'm expecting to get at least one or two more from every single line. Like I've got a pre-order that's, that's about to come in, or I've got something in the mail right now, or I have a strong suspicion that... You know, my friend or my wife bought it for me for Christmas, so I'll get it before the end of the year. So with all this stuff that's coming in, I was like, well, I don't want to do my Star Wars list and then end up leaving one or two figures off of that list that I got for Christmas. So I toiled over how am I going to do this. And basically what I decided is I, well, I'll just break it up chronologically. So I went through my Excel sheet and I said, okay, so I'm expecting to have about 360 figures at the end of the year. So maybe how many figures can fit on my desk at any one time? And I kind of thought, well, I'm going to break it up into 60 at a time. So I just looked at the first 60 figures that I bought this year in 2022. And I went and I pulled them off of my shelf and I dumped them here on my desk. And I'm just going to go through all 60 of these figures 
And I'm just going to start picking out the ones that are like, you know what, this one is a cool figure, but it's not good enough to qualify for my best of the year. And ideally, after, for 360 figures, I'll basically have to do six of these videos with 60 figures apiece. And let's just say I get, I pick 10 from each video. So that means when all is said and done, I'll have whittled my 360 down to 60. And then I can do a final, like seventh video where I've got those, those final 60 on my desk and I can eliminate and start ranking and come up with my top 20 of 2022. Now that might've been a very long winded explanation to a best of list. And you might be like, just get on with it, dude. But it's important for me to, I don't know, in my own mind, I need to kind of like lay this out of how I'm going to plan it. And, uh, I hope you enjoy it. It might seem kind of boring just watching me pick figures off of my desk. However, one of the YouTube channels that I really like, Toy Galaxy, um, that's exactly what he does. The guy that runs that channel, Dan, he does these videos called Dan in the Photo Booth, and he does one every quarter where he takes all the figures he bought in that quarter, and he does exactly that. and says, this one isn't going to qualify for my list. This one will. And I always really enjoy it. I find it kind of enthralling to just sit there and watch him eliminate figures. Uh, so yeah, if you've never watched any of Dan's channels and you enjoy what I do, please go check out his stuff because his stuff is way better than mine and he's been doing this a lot longer and I'm really just kind of ripping off his, uh, his whole gig here with this format. So having said all that, I think I'm going to flip things around. I'm going to show you this big mess of figures on my desk and I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please leave comments below. Um, and, uh, I think I'm good this year. I'm going to go through with this anyway, even if nobody watches this video, I'm still going to go ahead and do the other five videos with 60 figures a piece. But am I gonna do it again this format next year? I don't know. I did it differently last year. Maybe you preferred what I did last year. If so, please let me know because as much as I do this for myself, I do wanna do it for you guys. I want you guys to be entertained. So let me know. But anyway, let's get on with this. So here are my first 60 contenders for my best of the year. So the idea here is I'm just gonna start Eliminating figures from this list, which I know will not qualify for my best of the year that I hope to, uh, you know, publish either on January 1st or, you know, at least within a couple of days of that. So I have to start narrowing things down before we get to that point. And yeah. So this is supposed to be my first 60. I think there's actually a couple of more than 60 figures here. And that's because on my little spreadsheet where I was keeping track, I wrote things like G.I. Joe Sailor times three and Cobra Shock Trooper times two. So there might actually be more like 65 figures here or so. But uh, anyway, lots of, lots of cool stuff. So where are we going to start? Maybe we'll start with the reaction figures because honestly, they probably have a pretty slim chance of making my best of list. Like I love reaction figures. I wouldn't buy so many of them if I didn't love them. And they were probably my fastest growing collection this year is these simple little five points of articulation figures. However, when you take a figure with five points of articulation, you know, very simple, that's part of the charm. And you compare it to, you know, a figure like this, that's ultra detailed, you know, it's just like, how can you really compare it? Just, it's apples and oranges really I should almost do separate lists like my best reaction figures my, my best six inch action figures but that's not what I'm going to do I'm lumping them all together as action figures so right off the bat here this Godzilla this is based on an old Japanese like vinyl figure he's fun but he's not top 10 material also this guy here this is Red King he's an Ultraman character it's not actually a reaction figure it's from Mezco's five points line which is compatible with reaction figures uh, and this is Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit a character I've always loved and I was happy to get an action figure of her this year but she's by no means uh, you know best of the year quality figure so these reaction figures here this is the mummy from the original Boris Karloff mummy this is him in his human form so again that's a really fun figure something you wouldn't normally get but it's definitely not a toy of the year. So we can eliminate him. Storm Shadow. Again, he's a fan favorite character. But there's nothing particularly special about this Storm Shadow. So he can go. 
This is like a fun neon colored version of the mummy in his mummy form, as well as this neon Frankenstein. They're kind of fun little oddities to add to my collection, but definitely not toys of the year. So we can take them out of there. Now these G.I. Joe sailors, much like the, uh, the Cobra shock troopers, these guys are really cool because these are toys that we never got before in the real G.I. Joe line. Like they weren't included in the three and three quarter inch line or even the four inch line or even the present six inch line. This is the first time we've gotten them and they're really cool. I like them a lot, but they are just generic soldiers. There's nothing really particularly special about them. And these guys weren't even heavily featured in the cartoons or comics or anything. So it's not like, you know, a Cobra Trooper, which is a little bit more generic, but they're really cool. And sometimes they were heavily featured. Um, these guys here, as much as I like them, all the different variations, which is clean shaven, bearded, and mustachioed. They're all going to get the boot. Sorry, guys. Uh, over here, Lady J. I like her as a character, but I don't really care for that reactions as much. This Wolfman, I bought him this year, and he was, you know, for sale at Toys R Us, so readily available at retail for the first time for me. But this is actually just a, uh, a re-release of an earlier figure that was released before 2022. So really, he's disqualified anyway. Um, there are a couple of figures like that in here that I got in 2022, but were actually released in 2021. And as I get to those guys, I'll yank them out of here. Um, Duke, this is a really nice Duke figure. I like, I love how cartoon accurate he is. Um, so, you know, he might stick around. This guy here is the, uh, Game Master Drone. He's a silly, like, one-off character from one episode, and really only from about 30 seconds of animation in the G.I. Joe cartoon. So, yeah, he's not gonna make it. Uh, Major Blood, maybe we'll let him stick around for a minute, because he's pretty cool. Uh, Ultraman... This is a fun figure, and the fact that he came with a backdrop and like a boulder accessory and everything, he's really fun. But again, it's just there's no way he's going to make it to the end of the best of list, so I might as well get rid of him. Same as uh, this is Igor, as portrayed by Bella Lugosi. A lot of fun, a character we wouldn't normally expect to see in action figure form, but he can go. This here is Jackpot. This is a Transformer. He was from the. Uh, selects line this year i got him pretty early on and you know he's a fun figure because he's a new character you know not somebody that we see very often but i don't have any real attachment to this character and it's not a particularly great toy he's a little rinky dinky so yeah he's gonna go uh, now we've got some of these masters of the universe wwe mashups which were a lot of fun and i bought them whenever i had the chance but they're silly and the origins line is general uh, in general is just a little too simple compared to again the more detailed figures so they probably have a pretty uh it's a long shot that these guys are gonna make my best of list so stone cold steve austin mixed with trap jaw he's gone uh breath the hitman heart who's one of my uh, top two favorite wrestlers along with randy macho man savage but him mixed with triclops is not a best of action figure of the year um sergeant slaughter mixed with man at arms you know, again, fun, but not best of the year material. Um, let me see. I've got another G.I. Joe reaction figure, Bazooka, hanging around there. This is fun because we've never gotten Bazooka in his winter gear before. But, again, kind of episode specific. And, you know, even though it's neat, being a reaction figure, he's got a long way to go. Um, the Shock Troopers, I'm going to keep them around for a little while because, like the, uh, the G.I. Joe uh sailors these guys have never been done in any format before and they're really neat looking and uh yeah like definitely both of them wouldn't make it so maybe i'll say uh it's hard to choose which one i like better of the two so maybe i'll just leave them for now um so we've got some marvel legends here i got a lot of marvel legends this year but obviously i didn't get very many in the first couple of months because there's only a handful of them in this particular collection so this is Captain America. This was, I think, they called the 60th or 80th anniversary Captain America. And he's really cool. He's uh, probably the best Captain America figure that I own. Maybe the best one that's ever been released. He came with a lot of cool stuff. I'll hold on to him. Despair. 
this is a cool character. You know, he's kind of an obscure Marvel villain. And it's fun to add these obscure characters. But, you know, he's just, he's kind of too plain in design. It's mostly just an all black body. So as cool as he is, and I'm happy to have him, he's just not going to be a best of the year figure. So we can move him out of there. Uh, Cassie Nandor. I actually got this figure before he had his own Disney Plus show. And I loved the Disney Plus show. So I'm a big Cassie and Andor fan. But this figure is just, it's kind of plain. Like Cassie is just a dude, you know, in a, in a jacket. There's nothing really science fiction-y about him. Nothing overly Star Wars about him. So as much as I like the character and even like this toy, it's just a little too, uh, too bland to make toy of the year. So we'll get rid of him. All right, we're making, we're making pretty good progress here. Um, what else we got? Maybe I'll just shuffle things around a bit. We'll come right back. Okay, so here's some more WWE Masters of the Universe mashups, like China here. And uh, yeah, she's definitely not Toy of the Year. Junkyard Dog. I was a fan of him back in the day when I first got into wrestling. And this is a fun figure with some fun accessories and everything. But uh, yeah, not Toy of the Year. Same as Rey Mysterio. He's actually maybe one of the cooler looking of these mashup figures. The fact that he's a luchador, he kind of fits in with the Masters of the Universe world a little bit more because he's, you know, he's weird and kind of unique. But we already got a Rey Mysterio mashed with Stratos the prior year. So, sure, this is different colors, but it's it's nothing really new or original. And, uh, again, it's just kind of a simple figure to be considered for Toy of the Year. So, we'll get rid of him. And speaking of simple... This here is the one Funko Pop in this particular batch. I think I only got about five Funkos this year, so I've definitely cut back on them. I still like Funko Pops, but it's got to the point where I'm just stacking the boxes on top of one another. I've got so many, and I don't have anywhere to put them. Uh, anyway, I'm a big fan of The Office. This is Erin Hannon from The Office. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to add her to my Office collection, but she's definitely not an action figure of the year. She's barely an action figure. Okay, moving on. This here is the Eternian Palace Guard. So, you know, he's cool. He came with a bunch of extra parts, so you can kind of customize him and change his helmet and change his weapons. Um, it's similar. To, we saw the same thing in the Classics line a few years back. So, uh, yeah, he's cool. I like him. But he's just kind of a generic trooper, and it's a little bit of a redo of what we've seen before. So he is not Toy of the Year. Now this here is Evil Lynn from the uh, the what is it the Masterverse Masters of the Universe line. Now um, there's at least two concurrent Masters of the Universe lines going. There's the Origins line, which are all these you know these little guys that I keep eliminating, and then there's this more detailed six inch line, which some of these figures are really nice. Um, but I'm I'm trying to avoid collecting them too much because I already have. A pretty thorough line of six inch Masters of the Universe figures in my classics collection. So I haven't bought too many of them and in fact this Evil Lynn figure I passed on it initially but as I looked at reviews and I really kind of thought you know what I really should go back and get this figure. I bought it. I really like it. Now would it qualify as a toy of the year? I would probably push this one through for further consideration. However this was a figure that came out in 2021 and I went back and got it early in 2022. So because it was not released this year, she is eliminated from this list, but it is a really nice figure. So sorry, Evelyn. All right, what else we got here? So there's Andre the Giant. This is another one of those mashup figures with Masters of the Universe. And again, he's fun. I like the fact that he's actually bigger than all the other figures in the line. But uh, yeah, again, they're just kind of too simple. So, I'm sorry, you have to forgive my hands creeping into the shot here. I'm not used to shooting videos this way, especially long videos. It's hard to hold this phone up all this time. So, okay, lots of stuff here still to go. But I'm impressed that this is moving a lot quicker than I thought it would. We're clearing house. Um, all right. You know what, Duke? Duke is seriously a contender. I think I he's probably going to get pushed through. Major Blood, as much as I uh, I like this figure and how cartoon accurate it is, I don't think he's going to make the cut. 
and realistically, these re these uh, shock troopers, they're cool. Um, but yeah, they're not toy. These there's there's way too many figures. Out of four hundred figures, there's no way those guys are gonna get through all of that. Um, keep Captain America around. Now we got some Transformers here. This is a repaint of Hoist. This is another Selects character called uh, Lift Ticket. And uh, I really like him. I really liked the Hoist figure last year. And, uh, you know, he made it pretty far up my list. He didn't end up making my best of. But, uh, so now he's got another chance in red instead of green. And I think he might actually look better in red. I really like this figure. So even though I don't have any ties to this character of Lift Ticket, eh, I'll, he'll stick around. Now the Sharkticon is actually a Transformer that I really like, and I was excited to get this new version from Hasbro, part of their studio series, but I was really disappointed with him. Not only is he really small, but I just found him really like wobbly, like his pieces don't really lock into place very well. It's, uh, yeah, I was disappointed in this figure, so he is not a contender this year. Um, Zemo, I really like this Zemo figure. He doesn't feel super fresh because there was a Zemo figure released in Marvel Legends a few years back um, and this one looks fairly similar to that one but the thing is I missed that for Zemo and I've wanted it for years but he's been really hard to find so even though this figure isn't anything really new or fresh it's new to me and it is a figure that I've wanted for a long time so and he does look great so yeah I think he's uh, he's sticking around now this here is Bodhi Rook from Rogue One and uh, you know he was a cool character they took a long time to give us this character they made most of the other Rogue One characters but not him and I'm not sure why it took so long he's cool he's got some cool accessories but like Cassian he's just he, he looks like a dude he looks like a mechanic or a plumber or something just nothing particularly cool about him when it comes to Star Wars you know I might really like these characters like Han Solo Luke Skywalker Bodhi Rook but uh, if you want to make my best of the year list, you got to be an alien or a stormtrooper or something like that. So sorry, Bodhi, but you're you're done. Um, okay, so now we've got Scareglow. This here is another one of the Masters of the Universe Revelation or Masterverse figures. So he's pretty cool. You got a couple Marvel Legends hiding back here. Armored Spider-Man, which I really like, and Hammerhead. This Hammerhead figure is nice. He came with, I think, an uh, alternate head, and he came with some alternate weapons and stuff. There you see him with the baseball bat. So pretty cool, but Hammerhead is just, he's just not a cool enough character to really be considered for Toy of the Year. Now, while we're talking about Marvel Legends, I'm just going to zip back here for a second, and you can see the Hydra Stomper. This is a really cool figure. I initially passed on it because I thought, well, it's just a, it's basically a big green Iron Man, and, uh... But after I passed on it, I kind of thought on it some more, and I was like, this is a really cool toy. Um, the problem is, is it was released in 2021. So I went back and got him early 2022, but like Evil Lynn, he's eliminated just because he's not a 2022 release. So he's got to go. All right. So what do we got here now? Maybe I should reshuffle again. Okay, I tried to space them out a little bit more. So who else we got back here? So we've got a few McFarlane Spawn figures here. So this here is Raven Spawn, which is a, a redo of an old figure he had done in the 90s. And I always really liked that 90s figure, so I was happy to get an upgrade of him. He's pretty cool. Also, we've got the Redeemer there. Now, I like, I like all these guys, but I do find the McFarlane proportions a little weird. Same as his DC multiverse figures. That's why I don't buy a lot of them. I find they just have kind of like long torsos and something. I just wish they looked like Marvel Legends. I, I don't know why he opted to make this kind of awkward scale. Um, anyway, Raven is cool. There's really nothing to... Don't, don't, I can't believe it took this long for that to happen. I was sure these guys were all going to go down like dominoes as soon as I started filming. But anyway, I think Raven Spawn is out... Um, and honestly, so is Redeemer. Like, he's cool with those, uh, those, those big wings and everything there. You know, lots of little intricate detail on his armor. It's a cool figure. But, 
yeah, again, he's just a little awkward to pose and play with. I find he doesn't stand very well. He's got those awkward, I think, just long torso. It's not, it's not super bad, but uh, it's not best, fi not best figure of the year anyway. Now the guy that fell over here. This is uh, Mondo Gecko from Super Seven Ultimate TMNT line. Now I loved Mondo Gecko when I was a kid. He's the skateboarding lizard. And this figure here is pretty much, you know, it's a recreation of that toy I had as a kid. That's what the Ultimate line is all about. Just bigger and better with increased articulation and more accessories. He's got a skateboard here with uh, with wheels and everything on it. It's, uh, it's cool, but I remember when I got this figure, I was disappointed just because I was looking at it and I'm like, is this thing worth, you know, the basically 75 bucks plus tax that I paid for it just because I already I still have my vintage Mondo Gecko figure and this is you know it looks the same it's just it's improved and it's blown up in size but I don't know it's just so hard to swallow the price point of these guys like these other guys here Masters of the Universe Marvel Legends these guys here are about 30 bucks Canadian now mind you they've gone up steadily all year long but at the start of the year when most of these figures were acquired they were still selling for about 30, 32 bucks. And yeah, this guy here is 75. And just, I gotta be honest, maybe that shouldn't be a criteria to judge the figure, but it definitely sucked some of my enjoyment out of this figure. So, Mondo Gecko, you are gonna go, unfortunately. All right, so we got another Transformer here. This is Starscream in his Shattered Glass colors. Shattered Glass means it's basically an alternate universe where he is uh, a good guy and he's painted to kind of look like Jetfire. And uh, I love it. I'll be honest with you. I liked this figure when it was first released as Starscream. And I, I think I might even like this even better in these colors. It just looks really cool. Plus, I've got so many Starscream figures over the years that even when they release a really nice one in his classic colors, it's got a little bit of a been there, done that feeling but uh, yeah this one feels fresh he's cool um what else maybe let's get in there a little bit this is from the transformers red series so this is optimus primal which is uh yeah he's kind of hot right now i guess because as i film this the uh, transformers rise of the beast trailer just came out yesterday so this guy everybody's gonna be talking about optimus primal you know, with that new movie coming out. This figure here doesn't transform. The red series is the robot enhanced design, um, which would be probably a deal breaker for a lot of people. That would be a surefire elimination because he doesn't transform. I actually don't care that he doesn't transform. I don't need my Transformers to transform. But uh, Optimus Primal, he just, he wasn't really of my era. I like the G1 Transformers. I didn't watch Beast Wars growing up. And it took some convincing for me to actually buy this figure. And I was impressed with it. Uh, I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. But still, I can't imagine a Beast Wars figure making my best of list. It's just, uh, I just don't have that connection to Optimus Primal. So, he's going to go. Um, Stinkor, that's another Masters Universe uh, Revelation Masterverse figure. Now, he's really cool. This is a, like a great Stinkor figure. And Stinkor is a great character. He's one of my favorite Masters of the Universe characters. But like Scareglow, I don't know. These guys are both really cool figures. But I just... I don't know if they bring enough new t to the table for me. Because I already have Stinkor and Scareglow in the Classics collection. And the Classics versions um, were pretty much perfect already. So... Like, this has just got a little bit of a been there, done that feel for me. But I'm not I'm not willing to let them go just yet. So hold on to those guys. Um, now here we've got the Ultimates Donatello. Super 7 released one turtle per wave over the first four waves of their Ultimates. And uh, I really love these turtles, especially these new sculpted heads. They all have, like, two heads. One head matches the, uh, the vintage toy, and then they've got this new sculpted head. Those are the ones I prefer. So this is Donatello with his newly sculpted head. It's a great design. But uh, since he's my fourth turtle and Leonardo made my list 
last year. Um, again, I just don't see another turtle making the list this year. So, but he is Donatello. I do love Donatello. <laughs> um, Leo and Donnie were my turtles growing up. My brother had Mikey and Raph. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll, almost, he can stick around for a little while longer. The other, uh, another ultimate I've got here is Mutagen Man. Now, this figure here was actually my toy of the year last year. Like, I really love this figure, just how big and bulky it is. I love the translucent design where you can see the guts and everything through the, uh, through the torso. And so early in 2022, Entertainment Earth released this glow-in-the-dark variant of the, uh, the standard color figure. And even at the $75 price point, I thought, well, this was my toy of the year last year. How do I not buy it? in this new glow-in-the-dark color scheme. So I bought it, and I still love it, but, like, you know, what does that mean? It was my toy of the year last year, so should it be my toy of the year this year? Probably not. It's just, you know, the some of the sheen, you know, has come off of the figure. It's uh, It doesn't have that, uh, you know, wow factor that it has before because I had already had it in my collection in different colors. So... You know, you could maybe argue that this should rank really high on my list if I love it so much and it ranked so high last year. Or you could look at it like, well, you already you know, enjoyed this. It made your list last year, so it's automatically eliminated this year. I, I don't know. Somewhere in the middle. I really, I think it looks good in these colors. I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't. So, you know what? He's going to stick around a little while. We'll see. Now, over here, this is a similar issue. This is the... This is a Swarm Trooper. So last year, my Action Force figures from Valiverse, they arrived right, I think it was right after Christmas. Like the last week of the year, my box of Action Force Wave 1 showed up. And the original Swarm figure, which is all yellow, he made my best of list. And there was maybe some newness bias there. Like, don't get me wrong, these are fantastic figures. But since I had literally opened the figure like a day or two before I made my best of list... I was kind of infatuated with the figure. It had just come out. And so now I got it again in this like really sharp color scheme with green, yellow, and blue. It's supposed to look like the Transformer Waspinator. Um, so yeah, it's a cool mashup. But again, like uh, Mutagen Man there, it's like, okay, well, this ranked pretty high last year, so does it rank high again, or does it get booted off the list just because we've already been there and done that? Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to eliminate him yet. Um, moving through here, I've got a couple more Star Wars guys. These guys can go. This Imperial Senate Guard. This is another one that, like, he's not a great figure anyway. I find his arms are really long and ape-like, and his design is kind of plain. You know, he's just a royal guard without his cloak. But I was annoyed because I bought this guy for, like, 40 bucks, and then, like, two weeks later, I saw him on sale for, like, 15. So I was just, I was mad at him. So, anyway, he's gone. And, uh, Costca Reeves here. Now, she's a much better figure. So you can see she's in her Mandalorian armor. And she's got a really nice head sculpt underneath. There we go. So, yeah, she's a nice figure. But, again, I've kind of mandalorian out a little bit, I think. Like, we've got so many Mandalorian characters over the last couple of years. And she doesn't really bring anything new to the table. And, you know, she didn't do a whole lot in the show. There was... Not a real opportunity to become a big fan of her or anything. So, yeah, she's cool, but she's going to go. And uh, this roadblock here. So, this is actually the only G.I. Joe classified figure in this whole lot. I got quite a few classified figures this year. So, you, you can expect to see them show up more in future videos. But uh, this guy here, you know, there's really not much need to talk about him. He wouldn't make my list anyway, but this was actually a 2021 release. It just took me a long time to get him because he was a Target exclusive, and we don't have Targets in Canada. So I had to jump through some hoops to get him, and I got him a little bit late. So anyway, I'm glad I got him, but he's not a contender. He doesn't look enough like classic Roadblock for me, and he was a 2021 release. Okay, so we're narrowing things down here. Maybe let me push everybody together again, and we'll regroup. Now, I've got a couple figures that have kind of been hiding in the corner here because these are carded figures. I don't usually keep figures carded, but every now and again I do. And these guys here, 
So this is a Snake Eyes reaction figure, and he was a Target exclusive. Oops. So my little brother who lives in Miami had to get this figure for me. And I kept him because he's on that unique packaging that looks like issue 21, the silent issue of G.I. Joe. Uh, it's a cool figure, but uh, even if I had opened him up and had a chance to play with him, I probably wouldn't uh, make him Toy of the Year. I've just got way too many Snake Eyes. There's not nothing wholly original about this guy. I do like the presentation of him in the package here, but I can't make a carded figure be one of my best of the year because I never really got to enjoy him. And Larry Hama here. So this was a kind of a little project by a company called, I think, Fresh Monkey Fiction, they're called. And uh, they made Larry Hama, who, if you don't know him, he's the guy that basically wrote all the G.I. Joe comic books and, you know, kind of credited as a creator of G.I. Joe in uh, in many ways so uh yeah this is a cool figure it's a high quality figure from a small little company but uh this was actually a redo i didn't buy it when they first did their kickstarter but then they made a second batch of them and i bought that one so i think technically this is a release from 2021 or maybe even 2020 so even though i just got them this year and this is a repop and i think they might have even changed something about him like actually taking away some accessories or something so you could say this is a new version of him but i'm going to save myself some trouble and say that this is a 2021 20, or earlier figure so he's eliminated from my list so both of those carded figures are going to go all right so what else we got here so i haven't talked about this is the wolfman from NECA. now wolfman you know the original one with uh lon cheney jr i love that movie um, I love the Wolfman, just the idea of werewolves in general, but the Wolfman in particular, I've always loved him. This is a really cool figure. He came with, you know, alternate parts. He could make his human counterparts and everything. So really cool stuff. But I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to eliminate him. Maybe he should get pushed along farther into consideration. But there's just something about, like, NECA's design. Like, you can see how he's kind of got this matte finish compared to, say, Marvel Legends that have this nice bright sheen to them. And I know that's my preferred style of action figure. This guy's just a little flat looking to me. Um, I've also got Atlas Destroyer from Pacific Rim. Now I've been I love Pacific Rim and I love Pacific Rim toys. And they I wish somebody would make more of them. So we got this guy from the Pacific Rim Black Netflix series, but I was kind of hoping they would make some of the kaiju, and they didn't. I'm much more of a fan of the kaiju than I am the uh, Jaggers, but this is a really nice figure. He moves well, he's posable, he's bright, he's colorful. So, yeah, is there anybody else here that I know isn't going to make it? Um, so Triclops over here, this is from the Masterverse line, and this guy's cool. I like that they changed him up enough. It's kind of the opposite than, say, Scareglow and uh, Stinkor here, in that he doesn't look like all the other uh, Triclopses in my collection. He's got this whole cloak and hat that he looks like he's like a pope or something like he leads a cult but what's cool is you can take all that gear off of him and make him look like the classic triclops if you choose to but uh yeah it's a cool figure i wouldn't have bought him otherwise but he's, he's just not top 10 material for me so i'm gonna get rid of him um muck man and joe eyeball so this is a big ultimates figure from super seven he's pretty great He's got a separate little character that comes out of the garbage can. Uh, you know, he's kind of a gross character. And I didn't have him as a kid. I don't really have any attachment to him. But I'm just really impressed with the actual construction of the figure there. So I think he's going to stick around. This is a, another Spawn figure. This is Soul Crusher. Now he's cool. He's a new character. Uh, he hasn't been around all that long in the comic book. So this is his first time ever getting a toy. And he's cool. I like him. I'm glad I picked him up. But I don't think he's Toy of the Year material either. So he's going to go. Um, and uh, this Violator, um, if you've been reading Spawn since the early days, Violator was always this scrawny little demon with these long little arms and stuff. And now this new version here is this big, beefy monster. I'm going to move these guys around so you can check them out. But yeah, so there's Violator. He's huge. Um, there was two versions of him. I got the bloody variant. So that's why he's got all this blood spatter all over him. Like, he's a really cool design. But, um, yeah, big doesn't mean favorite. Uh, I find he's a little awkward to handle. Um, he's a little hard to pose. 
sometimes because he's so like top heavy and whatnot. So yeah, I don't think he's gonna make it. Um, however, she spawn. I think she's going through. She was an early favorite of mine this year um, when I got that figure, and I didn't really have an attachment to the character previously, but uh, the figure just really impressed me. And Viola just kind of a pain in the ass to deal with him, just moving him out of the way. But yeah, she spawn. I really like this figure from when I first picked her up, and you know maybe we'll start doing this now. She's definitely going through to the next round. That's a that's a lock. She's definitely a solid figure. Who else here is an absolute lock for the next round? Well, how many do I have left here? Because I think I'm going to be doing six of these preliminary videos before I get down to kind of my, my final video where I'm going to whittle it down to my best of. So let's see. You know, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Um, that's not bad. I'd kind of like to, I didn't have a set number in mind, but it'd be kind of nice to get this down to 10. Is there anybody else here that can go? Duke, you're hanging in there. Atlas. I really like Armored Spider-Man. I had this uh, toy in the 90s. You know, I have a Web of Spider-Man issue 100 that introduced the spider armor. But um, I really like the texture in him. But I feel they made this version almost too sleek. Um, the spider armor always seemed really boxy and kind of awkward before. So this might make more sense for Spider-Man, but I kind of miss the boxy, awkward version. So for that reason, I think I'm going to take Spider-Man out of the mix. Um, yeah. Anybody else here? Eh, you know what? I feel pretty good about these guys. Letting them all have a chance at it. You know what? I hate kicking them out just because I was really stoked to get a Wolfman figure. And this is a really nice one. The sculpt and everything is cool. The accessories were great. Um, but I just looking at him, I know he's going to get eliminated eventually. So I might as well just get rid of him now. Um, make my life easier as I go down the road here um yeah everybody else i don't know if i'm ready to lose any of these guys these are all pretty great figures so i'm down to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen yeah, I think that's okay. So from this round, 13 of 60 are moving on for further consideration. Okay, so that was my first round of eliminations for my best of 2022. I had fun doing it. I hope you guys had fun watching it and you stuck around through the whole thing. Uh, do you agree with what I got rid of? Do you agree with what I kept? Let me know. I love talking about this stuff with you guys. So please, you know, leave me comments below. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the, uh, you know, the like button. All that stuff helps the channel. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. I plan on doing these videos pretty rapid fire. I'm hoping to get them all done over the next, like, two or three weeks. Obviously, before the end of the year. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for them. Again, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you soon.